Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Get up to six months free when you use my link below. Hey y'all, it's me, Bustle Juice, and welcome back to <laughs> Hot or Rot. Today we'll be reviewing episode two of RuPaul's Drag Race season 16, part two of the epic two-part premiere, where we got to meet our second set of seven queens, perform in the Queen Choice Awards talent show, and show us reveal runways inspired to make you look. So we'll be going queen by queen to break all of that down, plus covering some drama between Mistress Isabel Brooks and a queen that she was calling out on Twitter this weekend, allegedly. And y'all already know the twists and turns and drama and conflammery of what is going on with this season, so let's just get right into do it. First up, we've got Geneva Carr, who we learned this episode is known for styling her leg hairs on TikTok. And this is the reason I'm not on TikTok, y'all. I've aged out. Too old. Too old for this. Kidding. This actually is hilarious. And girl, you better work that clickbait. Anywho, Miss Geneva Carr's talent show performance begins with the line, vroom vroom, somebody cleared customs, giving us some comedy right off the bat and letting us know we're in for a good time. And this line is immediately followed with her going over to some pit crew members and licking a chili found under a serving plate. Things get spicy, her mouth gets on fire, and then we've got a bit of a breakdown in this song where she starts singing I'm Geneva, La Diva Las Matina, which turns into I'm Geneva over and over and over again. And I absolutely want to commend the production of this track for being a total earworm. The I'm Geneva, I'm Geneva was really smart. The only critique I really had for this performance was me wanting more dancing and energy and the dancing portion of this song where she was repeating that I'm Geneva, I'm Geneva, I'm Geneva. But all things considered, I enjoyed this performance and I thought it was a great start to the show, so I'd give this like a safe three flame hot. And over on the runway, she's giving a little best of both worlds Hannah Montana fantasy first coming out as Mariachi Mario turning into Maria in homage to the beautiful gowns she says her grandmothers used to wear. And firstly I want to commend that she absolutely gave us two completely different but thematically connected looks that were also important to both who she is as a person and a drag queen. And how the reveal was actually executed was smart. There were no tearaways and it was unexpected in a way until you know you look closer at that Mariachi jacket and start to see the bulkiness underneath where there turns out to be an entire dress that comes out from the top. Which is to say, I really enjoyed the way in which she approached this runway, but I think the two looks themselves, when considered on their own individually, weren't super strong. I think there were maybe some fit issues, and the dress, for example, felt a little plain with that blue stretch fabric section. But because the reveal was so much fun, I am still going to give this look a hot. And before we go any further, I've got to address something serious. A lot of y'all have been asking me in the comments, Bussy Queen, how are you watching this season of RuPaul's Drag Race? The answer, by using Surfshark VPN, the sponsor of today's video, to unlock geo-restricted content on streaming platforms I already use. For example, this platform is streaming season 16 to viewers in Argentina, but not the US. But thanks to Surfshark, it takes just one click to surf on over to Argentina and get access to that country's entire Drag Race streaming catalog, including season 16. I also love using Surfshark VPN because they keep my internet browsing traffic secure, private, encrypted, and anonymous. Which means I can have peace of mind when I'm traveling and using public Wi-Fi and at home. Because guess what, Mimi? Even your internet service provider could be watching everything you do and selling that data to advertisers. But Surfshark's great because you can use it on all of your devices with unlimited device login. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description of my video to start downloading Surfshark right now. And as part of a special new deal, you'll get up to six additional months of Surfshark for free when you enter code BUSSY at checkout. Plus, there's no risk and just trying it out because Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. Thanks, Surfshark, for sponsoring today's video. And next up, the other snack and parent of two, Hershey LaCour Jeté, who in the challenge gives us a bit of whiplash, whiplash. Girl, I have a crick in my neck just from watching that. And that, I think, is a talent in and of itself, all that neck thrashing. But aside from the neck thrashing and the song being catchy, the overall performance was largely confusing. And the words of Geneva Carr are like, I'm confused as to why she's in the jungle. And also dressed like Steve Irwin. And now it's time for my reveal. Ugh. Y'all, I want to dress in cute little cozy jackets so bad that I am the sweatiest person alive. And having like five key lights on me does not help with that. So here we are. Here's the reveal. But all things considered, while I as a viewer did leave this performance kind of confused, I can't say I wasn't entertained. So I'm gonna give this performance a safe hot. But Miss Hershey's runway tonight is anything but confusing. In fact, it is completely delectable and totally sweet. It's chocolate, covered up at first in a giant gold shimmery reveal coat, which I think was maybe not as successful as it was in her head, because I think the bigger challenge of some of these reveal type runways is to give us 
two or three or four, in some cases, different moments on the runway. Whereas this really is, she came out for 0.2 seconds, had a coat on and then tore it off to reveal the beautiful gown underneath. But I would say the brief is met and the short time that we got to spend with that gold moment was absolutely made up for with how beautiful this chocolate dress was. Like the body, the hair, the mug, the gold accessories in those frames without the lenses and the gold decorative peplum on the waist are such gorgeous details that really bring everything together here. Miss Hershey's giving us chocolate and this chocolate is and next up, eight and a half inch Plasma, who in the challenge tonight was the first to demonstrate a talent other than lip syncing and dancing to an original track. Her number starts off with a lip sync burlesque performance to this song actually from the 60s called T for Two by Sarah Vaughn, that she's actually re-recorded in a faster tempo and added ad libs about RuPaul into. And the beginning of her number is all very fun, but then it turns into an impressions slash stand-up comedy set where she does impersonations, which she finishes all off with a final vocal belt as she rips off one final burlesque reveal in the neck collar and that's her show. And she gets critiques from the judges that she needed to pick one thing to be a master of in the talent show instead of being a master of none. And I do agree with that in a sense given the time constraints because I actually thought she was really good at all the different individual things that she did. There just wasn't a big enough time lapse between these separate items in the performance to have the bigger impact that she wanted to have. So all things considered I'm going to give this a three and a half flame. <sighs> and over on the runway, she's giving us a little all tea, all nightshade, tomato inspired reveal costume, which she tells us is actually not just a tomato, but actually a sewing needle pushpin cushion tomato inspired by the one her grandma used to have. And this pushpin cushion comes off to reveal a sexier, more bedazzled svelte tomato underneath. And as she prances around the runway, loses more and more articles of her tomato skin clothing in a very burlesque style, which I think was so great because we, as as audience members didn't really know which part of the outfit was going to come off next and each moment felt new and exciting when she did the reveals. Plus she did a great job of blending sexy pinup with campy pushpin cushion tomato. This was genius and hot. And next up our resident banana queen Ms. Nymphia Wind, who in the challenge is giving us a traditional Chinese sleeve dance and beautiful costumery and makeup. And I loved this performance from Nymphia because it was everything that every other performance was not. She gave us something visually beautiful, culturally inspired and meaningful to her as a person and a drag queen, which is all just really smart of her to do, especially considering the epidemic we have going on with with Drag Race pitch tracks. So to her sleeveography, I give a <laughs> And over on the runway, she is giving us, as she says, the life story of a banana. First, as a giant bedazzled, unripened green banana, which reveals to like an entire grocery store display of bananas going from an ombre of green to starting to ripen at the bottom yellow, which comes off and reveals to a mature, ripe yellow banana with a spot here or there, which then finally reveals into the last look, which is old, ripened, and browned banana. Bananas. The full banana life cycle. Isn't it beautiful? But actually though, isn't every single aspect of what she did in this look beautiful and campy and silly and stupid in the best way possible? And I also love the third and fourth looks, I think being very much an homage to Josephine Baker's iconic banana costumes from back in the day. Plus not only are the outfits amazing, but the hair, the wig, the banana hair wig, you have got to be kidding. The execution of that is just flawless. And girl, I've seen a lot of bananas in my lifetime, but this one takes the bunch. This look is hot. And girl, after this episode, you can consider me a banana believer. That's the tea. And next up, cosplaying as the Antichrist this episode, we've got Megami, who in the challenge gives us a little talent where she is lip syncing to What's Up by Four Non Blondes and carrying a rainbow flag around the stage. And this all culminates in her picking some cue cards off of an easel and showing them to the camera. Which read, if you love drag on TV, love us in the voting booth too. Protect queer art and look. <laughs> The message of what she is ultimately saying here with these cue cards is a good one. Like I certainly cannot dispute that. How or why would I? But let's be real for a second here. She is on the gayest TV show ever made and is ultimately campaigning on the gayest TV show ever made for the protection of more gay queer art, which is kind of like going into a restaurant and just telling people that are already sitting down with food in front of them to eat their food. Like there is no real protest or subversion of expectation happening here. So, you know, redundant political message aside, her talent is ultimately just lip syncing with not a lot of dancing. This talent show number was a rat. 
that. But can't say she wasn't giving good face in the lip sync. And over on the runway, she comes out in a look she describes as an all-seeing goddess outfit in honor of her name, Megami, which means goddess. And I saw this and had a lot of thoughts about it. The first being, it's a shame she couldn't see herself in the mirror before she walked out on the runway. I'm just, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Kidding. I think it's just like a little messy. It's giving Sea Witch with all that drapey blue fabric everywhere. And none of that sparkly sequin fabric feels connected thematically to any of the eye headdress feather thing happening up here. And then I, of course, was wondering by the time she's at the end of the runway, where the hell is the actual reveal? Which, as it turns out, her reveal is the eyes on her hands a la Pan Labyrinth. And while that reveal was maybe dumb enough to work in another context or style of look, this was not a reveal feel at all because the second she hits the runway we can see that the eyes are right there on her hands like she's not fooling anybody with that yeah i'm gonna give this look a rat. and next up she doesn't see the bar she flips it it's maya iman lepage and miss maya iman lepage gives us a performance to bounce by calvin harris and keyless which starts off with what seems to be just a lip sync and i was getting kind of nervous like uh oh girl why are we getting just a lip sync to a track what are we doing here but after the lyrics drop out and the song goes into the break down section she really turns this the hell out like the headstand twerking on that box was absolutely amazing and i love that she not only did that but went back to the box later and did more flips on top of it to get onto it and then more flips and rolls to get off of the box, which then ended ultimately in some splits. All performance techniques she, of course, learned when she was out flipping with my cousins. <laughs> I guess that's like a normal Florida activity, going flipping with your cousins. There are some things that just should not be done with cousins, and we're gonna leave that at that. And sure, we've seen queens like Aja or Lemon jump off of or onto boxes before, and we've seen plenty of queens do flips and splits, whatever, but she really spent the entire second half of her number doing nothing but gymnastic floor routines all over that goddamn stage, and I think she absolutely deserves some flowers for that, so I'm gonna give her a hot. And over on the runway, Miss Maya Iman LePage says she is serving up some outfits, giving us a representation of what it's like to live in the crazy Miami weather. A jacket for when it's cold for point zero one seconds apparently and then a swimsuit for when it's hot and summer the rest of the year and at first when i saw her walk out onto the stage and immediately rip that jacket off i was thinking damn i wish that we had some more time to spend with that look because it looks really cool but i later realized during critique she made the right call by taking that thing off as quick as possible because the shape was a little odd and i'm not totally sure the overall effect was that great and similarly to how i felt about morphine swimsuit i just don't particularly care to see a plain pattern swimsuit on a RuPaul's Drag Race runway. I just don't. Plus, if you're gonna wear a plain swimsuit, everything else about the look needs to be absolutely perfect, and it wasn't. So I'm gonna give this a and finally, flight attendants, please prepare the cabin for takeoff. It's Plain Jane, who performs in the talent show her original track titled Burger Finger, which I hate. I hate that she said Burger Finger because that is really gonna be stuck in my head probably for the rest of my life. Honestly, Burger King better jump on that. Like that would be some great cross promo marketing with Drag Race and Burger King and Plain Jane. Wow, the marketing teams that just heard that, they're working hard right now. You watch. Anyways, Burger Finger is a part rap, part hyper pop EDM track I suppose. And her performance consists of her wearing a giant bedazzled burger costume that reveals into, you guessed it, a giant pair of milkshakes that she ends up covering in ketchup and mustard. And honestly, I really hate how much I enjoyed this performance because it was so damn stupid. But let's be real, she did exactly what she knew she needed to do and that was make RuPaul laugh and act a damn fool. This performance was hot. And for her reveal runway, she gives us two really crazy looks. The first one is a Roman off dynasty inspired russian robe which is gorgeous in and of itself and i think she looks completely stunning in this look and this robe comes off and she finds herself in a little sports jersey and bedazzled jean shorts which on the back have lettering reading bean town plus did you catch it the foam finger that she's got on with this sports girl outfit connecting to burger finger girl the thematic link there between the runway 
and a challenge. Like she really is teaching us there is a finger for every occasion and hold. Okay. And for as beautiful as that first look is, the second one is dumb. But again, all the details are finessed and this is very polished and complete looking drag with a clear silhouette idea and funny concept that is executed on flawlessly. Plain Jane is, as it turns out, not so simple. She's hot. But before we land at our final destination, which is our top two lip sync and hottest haunts, let's go ahead and talk about the drama concerning Mistress Isabel Brooks and her seemingly, allegedly, possibly calling out Plain Jane and the fan base for how they reacted to her behavior on the show versus Mistress's behavior on the show during her season. So when part two of this epic two-part premiere was airing, Mistress Isabel Brooks took to Twitter writing, okay, dot, 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 time to report and get her accounts deleted with a smiley face emoji at the end. Followed up with a tweet reading, when she meets her next week, Oh yeah, it's a wrap, including a picture of both Plain Jane and a mandatory meeting here. And while she never tagged or said Plain's name in any of these tweets, fans did come to the conclusion on Twitter and Reddit that she was seeming to call out the fan base's double standards in how they reacted to her shady behavior on her season versus how the fans are reacting to Plain Jane's shady behavior here on this season. Which, if you're unaware, Mistress received a lot of hate on her season for what was mostly playful shade with her sisters. And groups of haters actually took to reporting her social media accounts in mass, apparently getting her accounts blocked or banned or deleted in some cases temporarily. Plain Jane, though, doesn't seem to be having any sort of those same problems with haters, or she has at least not announced that she's had any problems with haters concerning her behavior. Which really is all crazy to me, because when I was watching Mistress on her original season, I never perceived any of what she was doing to be hateful or bullying in any way. Like, it always seemed she had her sister's best interests ultimately in her heart and she was only having fun with them. Whereas, let's be honest, Miss Plain Jane is up on this season really just kind of being shady out of nowhere, out of pocket for no reason at any given moment. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Like, I definitely am entertained by it, if a little put off. But it's good TV, and she certainly is making a name for herself and getting the people going online. But y'all, let's really ultimately remember that RuPaul's Drag Race is first and foremost a reality TV show that makes most of its money off of drama. And none of y'all as fans of the show or these queens should be going into their DMs to tell them how to behave on a TV show. A reality TV show meant for your entertainment. It's not real. But yeah, that's that. So let's go ahead and crash land into this top two lip sync. The twist in this episode, like part one of the premiere, is that the queens get to rate themselves, which ultimately results in a top two lip sync between Plain Jane and Geneva Carr. And I did react to this Becky G shower lip sync over on my Patreon, along with the other best parts of this episode. And I will be reacting to every episode of RuPaul's Drag Race this season on my Patreon at patreon.com slash bussyqueen. That's my members only website where my patron family gets exclusive member benefits like early access to my YouTube videos and access to those exclusive reaction videos and you too can join and help support the Bussy Queen channel by clicking the link in the description of this video. See you there. But concerning my thoughts on this lip sync, it happened. It was a lip sync. It felt a little long to me, honestly. And while Plain did have plenty of funny moments throughout this and really played into the milkshake slippage that was happening in her outfit malfunction, malfunction, I was kind of rolling my eyes by the end because the only real joke or comedy she brought to the lip sync was that she was a big bimbo. And Geneva didn't underwhelm me, but I would say she about whelmed me. So Plain Jane wins this lip sync rightly so, along with $5,000 and immunity for some mysterious future possible elimination. And now finally, let's talk hottest tots. On the runway this week, I'm gonna give it to Nymphia Wind. But for the challenge, I had a tough time deciding because playing Jane's performance certainly was the most memorable and funny and irreverent of everything that happened tonight in the talent show. But I was most gooped and gagged by Maya Iman LePage's flips and jumps all over that box. So I'm gonna give it to Maya. I love a good stunt. And I, of course, also asked my patrons over on patreon.com slash bussyqueen to vote for their hottest tots. And this week they've chosen Nymphia Wind in the runway and Nymphia Wind in the challenge. And I want to give one more extra special thank you to today's video sponsor, Surfshark VPN. They've been keeping my internet traffic encrypted, anonymous, and secure and helping me unlock geo-restricted content for several years now. And I know you'll love them too. So be sure to use my link below to download Surfshark VPN today and get up to six additional months for free. And finally, I want to give an extra special shout out to EDK Art, Ryan McGuire, and Amanda Johnson, who've all just joined my Patreon at the highest 
next year. And Ashley Brungart, Child Free Mateau, Dorothy Hall, Fat Leisha, Frankie, Laura, Matthew Burns, Stephen Topher, Tyler and Diximdi, and Will and Tana, who are all supporting me at my Buzzy Queen Collector tier over at patreon.com slash buzzyqueen. See you later. Love ya. Bye. <laughs> I think I'm dying.